Okay, I think we are on here. Yep. Are we good? Are you guys here in chat? For some reason I can't see anything, so I'm going to trust you guys that it is working. Okay, cool. Finally, I don't know what was going on yesterday. We were having some issues, but we are back today. Um, sorry for the late video. We're going to try to do this like a weekly thing on Fridays. That's the goal. Um, but yesterday we had some stream issues. There was some stuff going on with YouTube and it wouldn't go. But um, good news. Got some new mic stuff. And David now has a wireless mic. He's hey. back there. So um, he'll be actually watching chat and everything. And um, we didn't light up the Tesla yet. Oh, uh, yeah. The supercharger. The supercharger. Check, we need to light check, that up. Check this out. Just like, well, it is the real thing, but. Yeah, so we got to light that up. Um, but yeah, um, some fun things to talk about today. Wow, we got a lot of people in chat already. Holy crap. Nice to meet you all. Hopefully you have a nice Saturday. Have a good weekend. We got a lot of snow this weekend. Yeah, we probably, oh, this weekend, uh, well, this week we got probably 25 inches. Yesterday it was probably like 14 inches alone. It's a lot of snow. It was pretty good. We needed yeah. it, though. We, we got quite a lot. So um, we've been dealing with the snow and everything. Um, but yeah, we have uh, some fun things to talk about. So let's just go ahead and try to jump right in it. Real quick though, um, is the stream quality okay for you guys? Can we get like a thumbs up in chat or just make sure it's looking good for everybody and sound is okay? Yes, yes, great, cool. Okay, awesome. Just want to double check before we get started. So, um, one kind of want to talk about Tesla stock a little bit because it's it was a wild ride last there, week. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if you guys invest in their stock or whatever, but yeah, it jumped up. What four hundred, three hundred dollars last week? Yeah, because it was started like it was crazy. Yeah. Um. So it's gone down a little bit. I think we ended at like seven forty. On Friday, uh, high of 960, so quite a big difference. But that's to be expected. When the stock jumps up, it's going to kind of come down a little bit. Um, next up, I uh, want to talk about Model 3 deliveries in China due to the coronavirus. One, I do not have the coronavirus. I'm going to set that straight. I've had a lot of people commenting on my videos because I was just in China. I do not have it. Thank you for your concern, but we're good. Um, but uh, the Chinese government actually started approval for February 10th. Sorry. You good back there? <laughs> I heard noise. Um, so February 10th, the Tesla Shanghai factory should start up production. But again, it's going to depend a lot on their suppliers and how they're able to start up production and everything. Because the Chinese government's really starting to work with a lot of like the big suppliers and big manufacturing companies in China to really get them started back up because this is, this is affecting a lot of people in general and a lot of the big companies. So it's going to depend, I think, on supplies. They might be a little supply constricted. Yeah, I don't know, but it's good to hear that China did allow that because uh, that's one reason that stock did drop there, uh, like, what, Thursday of last week is just because yeah. Tesla had made the announcement that there were going to be delays with those Model 3 deliveries. But now, on f you know, the next day, uh, China announced that they will be helping or allowing the company to start back up. So that's good news. Yeah, definitely. Uh, real quick, thank you, James. Uh, James says, love you two. Kind of remind me of those two Sonic commercial guys. <laughs> <laughs> we love those commercials. Yeah, we yes. do. We do actually like those commercials. Maybe, maybe next time we'll get some tater tots. Maybe we should make a fun commercial. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually a good we, idea. Well, thank you, James, for the super yeah. chat, though. I really appreciate it. Tell that. James, if he is interested, if we tell him to go and look for something called Tesla Taste Test Tuesday. Oh, my which, God. Which is a really, it's a video we did several years ago but basically we're in our tesla eating food and it, they're not it's a very cringy video it was one of the first videos it's it's kind of embarrassing but go back and watch it, it had good oh, good man that's cringy just go back tesla taste maybe tesla. maybe we'll watch it later together with chat that, that'll be good maybe yeah. we'll watch it it's later funny. with you guys um so yeah model three deliveries in china looking to be back on track i guess we'll just have to see how their other suppliers 
work out. Somebody, um, somebody spotted your Kit Kats. <laughs> oh, you like that? Okay, so that the Kit Kats might come later. Those I got all from like Japan. I got a bunch of them. So maybe I guess we'll do Tasty Tuesday or oh, yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, so yeah, um, new service center in Colorado. So we had a video on that we uploaded this week with some new superchargers, a new service center. Um, and we actually went to Idaho Springs today. Yeah, it was a nice little trip. It was, uh, you know, we had a lot of snow yesterday, so driving up there, you know, there's a lot of snow on the road, and yeah. we made it pretty close, but once we hit, like, Floyd Hill, uh, we hit this, the end of the ski traffic, and it took us about half an hour, 40 minutes just to go seven miles, but once we made it to Supercharger, we were one of the first cars to charge at the brand new Idaho Supercharger. It is yeah. the first V3 Supercharger in Colorado, so that's exciting. Yeah, it was actually pretty cool to go check it out. And yeah, it's actually working now. Technically, it's not online in the cars or just yet. It should be soon. They have, I think, uh, two more lights to put up, uh, like street lights kind of thing. Yeah, and pedestrian and lights. Might have to repaint the lines in the parking lot just so it's a little clearer of where you're supposed to be parked when charging. Yeah. But the, the, it does work, though. So if any of you in Colorado who are taking uh, I 70, it's right to the east of the come and go in Idaho Springs at the second exit. It Again, it doesn't show up in your app and it doesn't show up uh, in the Tesla navigation, but you can still stop there and charge, no problem. Yeah, so we were able to check it out at least. None of the others have opened up yet and the service center actually is starting to take appointments. So a lot of cool stuff going on in Colorado. Um, thank you, Bodhi, for the super chat. Uh, love you too, thank you. That's very nice of you. Um, so, I guess some other things to kind of go over are firmware updates on the cars. So most everyone's at 2020.4.1, which brought text messaging and a few other features, especially for like MC1 cars, yeah. so like the Model S. So now that finally got some stuff. Um, but really, MCU2 didn't get anything from that. Nothing new. The only thing was that like more additional vehicle information tab with on the software. So yeah. it shows kind of, you know, what audio system you have what full self-driving or autopilot hardware you've purchased software sorry yeah software but nothing much new for mcu2 people but it was mainly to bring the mcu1 people with older cars up more up to date with what the mcu2 cars have yep um so we got that hopefully there's some fun stuff coming up i don't know i think they're due for some crazy oh, some fun software kit. stuff um next up uh, new steering wheel designs. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but um, let's go ahead and do this. And so there's a new steering wheel design patent that was released from Tesla. And so here it actually is. This is the update. This is the actual patent itself. So it's basically got haptic feedback. So these buttons right here are not truly buttons. They're basically like a little screen. Really kind of cool. And then the drive stock where you put your car in gear actually is right here. You don't actually have that stock. So I don't know how you do autopilot, yeah. like in Model 3s and the Y. Yeah, and I don't um, know about that. We'll have to wait and see because it seems like if you're turning, that might be kind of a weird place to, to, to change it. I would be afraid of off. accidentally touching something. Yeah, if it is haptic. Yeah. I don't know. If it was a real button, it might be a little better. Or maybe it would just be a display. I could see a display being a little, you know. Yeah. Um, now, one thing to note on this patent, um, the two gentlemen that did patent it with Tesla actually are no longer employed by Tesla. They mm -hmm. left, I think, one last year and one maybe this year. Um, but it could just be something Tesla's patenting in case they want to explore this in the future. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make it to the cars, but it is something that they would rather kind of lock in with a patent now than kind of constrict themselves later down the line. So, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe this might be, like, the Cybertruck wheel. That'd be interesting, because, you know, in, when we were in the test ride of the Cybertruck, it didn't have, like, a... It was, like, more like a, a yoke or whatever. It wasn't a complete steering yeah. wheel. It was more like or what we saw in the Roadster, wasn't it? it was kind yeah, of it was the same very style. similar. Yeah. Um, but also, in the Cybertruck, they chose park and drive and gear from the screen, didn't they? Um, I don't think there was I don't actual, remember. I yeah, I don't did. remember. They had a different screen, but that was just for, you know, the test ride purposes. Yeah. Um, real quick, sorry, trying to read some of your guys' chat. Um, GI Shot Go says, any way to get hardware upgrade if you have AP2? Uh, actually, we have Autopilot 2 on our Model S, and so far, the Autopilot full self-driving computer and everything hasn't been made compatible for that Autopilot suite yet. So... Mm -hmm. 
Still working on it, I guess, yeah, from we, the Tesla we've, side. We've heard uh, from some people online, like on Twitter, that he could see in the code that there's pushing out code there that yeah. means that they're trying to support MCU-1, which is those older cards built before March of 2018, so that you can tell that they are working on it, but they have not, to our knowledge, started doing upgrades for any car older than March 2018 yet. Yeah, so, I don't know, it would be, I don't know, actually that's, but, but we are eager, hopefully and, it comes yeah, sooner than later. We, and we are eager for that because we do still have one car with MCU-1 and Autopilot 2, we also have another car with Autopilot 2.5 and MCU-1, so it'll be nice uh, when they do start doing those upgrades. Yeah, definitely. Um, Luke says that we should do a podcast, this is kind of like our podcast. They just get to look at the, the lovely uh, supercharger. Yeah, you just get to look at a supercharger. And our, model, and our Model X couches, I don't know if all of the viewers have noticed, but these are actually the third row seats from Model X's here. Yeah. With, um, with the built-in cup holders and USB ports. GI Shock says, I wish I had the entertainment system and additional games along with the FSD. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is a big bummer. And Elon did mention, you know, we when other people have asked him, even Eric tweeted him, and Elon replied back saying they are working on the Autopilot 2 to Autopilot 3 upgrade. But when Eric asked about the MCU-1, Elon said, well, you don't really need it. It, it doesn't yeah. really, you know, add much to it. But I think a lot of people would still like it just for those, you know, being able to watch Netflix or playing some of those games. Yeah, a lot of those games are actually pretty fun. So, yeah, kind of bummed about that too. Um, but, yeah, so new steering wheel. That's kind of what it looks like right now. Hopefully we learn something a little bit more on it at a later date. But the haptic feedback is pretty interesting to me because a lot of manufacturers have shown like haptic wheels in their like potential future design cars. So that'd be kind of nice. Um, let's see here. So Giga Texas. Yeah, that was an interesting surprise. That was a very big surprise. Actually, though, if you think back, back to before they did the Gigafactory in Nevada, mm -hmm. I believe Texas was in the running as well. There were several states that made it down to the, like, the final five, and we were thinking it was going to be Nevada just because it was so close to Fremont right. uh, being over in, in like the Reno area. And I think Texas, if I recall correctly, was like one of the finalists. And mm -hmm. I think... Uh, it kind of makes sense because also Texas, a lot of trucks. I was just going to say, <laughs> te Tesla's going to need some place to build all these cyber trucks. And it also has lots of wind energy. That's yeah. one of the largest producers. You know, people always think of oil and, and gas from Texas, but yeah. it's actually one of the largest wind producing states there is. And also, though, there are still some weird restrictive laws against Tesla in Texas. And I can see what better way... Yeah, this should hopefully help mend yeah. that yeah. and maybe get Tesla into the state. If they build a gigafactory there, you yeah. know, maybe they would finally change the laws and allow t Tesla to sell cars directly in the state. Yeah, which I think easier. is a very stupid law. Um, maybe we should get into that one day. Yeah. But, like, same thing with Michigan, too, right? Uh, I don't. They think just so. did something. Oh, they did. In, they just won some uh, like lawsuit in Michigan, yeah. which was preventing them from selling cars directly in Michigan. And now they can have a service center, but it has to be owned by like a subsidiary. Yeah, so that'll be interesting how they work that. It's, it's all these ancient laws to, meant to support you know old uh, dealerships. Um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, Tesla potential Giga in Texas. I think it could work for the Cybertruck. Yeah, because yeah, they are definitely going to need a new location to pump those out of because Fremont is basically full with three Y coming up S and X. And, and, and I don't think they have room at the gigafactory I don't in either. Reno just because they are continuing to expand yeah. the battery production. Yeah. And, and also they need to continue building, you know, expanding the building as well. And that's also where they're doing the motors, correct? Uh, some of the motors. Yes. So and some of the other parts. Yes. With them bringing on the cyber truck, they're just going to need to expand that even more for those parts. So, yeah, I think we could potentially be seeing Cybertruck in Texas. Pretty fun. Um, and then, yeah, so big things, last big things we want to talk about is Model Y. So deliveries upcoming, supposedly starting in early March. So uh, that's just, what, a few weeks away. And the Model Y did receive a 315-mile EPA range, which is the most efficient suv ever 
Yeah, that's way way better than the Model X. Model X is definitely bigger, definitely better for more people, but uh, the Model Y is going to be amazing. I think it, I wish they would have come out with the Y before the 3 just because I think it's going to sell so much better. Elon said himself yeah. it's going to sell better than the S, the X and the 3 combined. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what improvements they've done to the car itself over Model 3. Cuz he did say it's going to include a lot of similar parts, I think like 75% or something like that. So I'm curious to know what exactly is going to be transferring over and what have they improved upon? I know they've talked a lot about the wiring in the car, improving that so it's yeah. a lot less. I, I um, heard that, but I think at one time they, that was the goal was to greatly yeah, reduce it. Yeah, I think it's it, going to be pushed out. But they out, came but back because they wanted to bring the car out a lot faster. So instead know. they decided, okay, let's kind of stick with the three as much as possible just so we can put the Y out sooner. But maybe that's something we'll see on the Cybertruck you know, in a couple of years. Yeah, it could be on the Cybertruck, and I mean, same thing, maybe future Model Y iterations will have that new wiring, or maybe even like the monobody design, um, so instead of a bunch of stamped pieces welded together, it's basically one cast piece, that would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff with Model Y. I'm very, very excited to actually get one and see the difference between that and Model 3, because Model 3 has a very fun driving experience. I'm curious to know if Model Y is going to keep that experience or not. I guess time will tell. Um, Should we talk about the Model Y, uh, the performance, you know, that they just showed recently, all the new features. Uh, what are those? You know, like the spoiler they did, and the new wheels, the Uber turbines. Oh, yeah, we kind of talked about these last week. Let me pull this up real quick. Um, but yeah, there's several different rim styles now. And we've talked about it a lot because if you see this upgrade, uh, performance upgrade option, that actually knocks off 35 miles of range. So we talked about it last week quite a bit. And it's probably because one, these wheels right here, which are the Geminis, which I actually have on my Model 3 right now, are very aero efficient, as you can see in the design. And they're also very lightweight, which is half the battle pretty much but these and they're also 19 inch but if you look at the or wait are they 19 or 20 crap i can't remember the uh, uber turbine no the gemini's uh, the gemini are aren't they 19 or am i wrong on that i think they're 19s because they're bigger yeah, they're than 19s. the regular yep. 18s yeah they're 19s um and so these Ur uber turbines are 21s which look like they're gonna weigh a lot because it looks like there's a lot of material on there and there's not a little arrow cap that can pop off so it means they have to have a pretty well-built design, which is just going to be heavier, but it's also a bigger tire. And with the new update we saw with the wheel sizes confirmed by Tire Rack, if those still hold true, this is going to be a staggered setup, much like Performance Model S. So that just means you're going to just have a little bit more rolling resistance and everything. Um, a lot of people were wondering, though, anything else in this performance upgrade list that could potentially impact range like that and i really don't see anything uh the performance brake shouldn't impact it the lowered suspension should actually technically help um in the aluminum alloy pedals and stuff so yeah now the one thing they don't include here or talk about is the spoiler right here but you can see it in the image yeah it's like it used and to be so listed and it's on yeah. any performance but if you click on long range that spoiler disappears and in model three they explicitly state that it has a spoiler so I wonder if this is going to be a similar situation to Model 3 where the spoiler comes out at a later, later. date for those I, earlier deliveries. I think, yeah, they probably just forgot to list it on there. But if they're showing it on the pictures, then it, I'm pretty sure it will be included. Yeah, I really hope it is. But I'm sure there'll be a ton of aftermarket coming out too. So that'll be super nice also. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's answer some questions here. We got a lot here. Sorry, I'm going to scroll back and make sure I tag all these. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Model X or Model Y? What would you prefer? Somebody said, do you think it's worth getting FSD or sticking with the regular autopilot? Is it that big of a difference? Um, so currently, I would recommend full self-driving. So if we go here and go to autopilot, let me move this camera real quick over here. So if you look at here, it'll actually tell you what autopilot includes and a bunch of things were moved from like the old enhanced autopilot to now full self-driving. So navigate on autopilot, auto park, summon, auto lane change, all that's now part of full self-driving. 
So personally, I used to say enhanced autopilot's great. I would stick with that. But now I would go with full self-driving. Yeah, I kind of liked it how they had it packaged before just because it yeah. was cheaper to just get the enhanced autopilot and then you could buy the full self-driving later. But a lot of people were complaining that it didn't even have like adaptive cruise control or tack. And so they went ahead and repackaged it. Now everybody gets just like standard autopilot, which will yeah. keep, maintain the lanes, do auto steering within the lane and, and, main, and gives you that adaptive cruise control. But if you want to do that auto lane change by touching the turn signals or, or, or do navigate on autopilot and summon and all that, now you do need the full self-driving package. Yeah, it just seems to be missing a little bit more than I would prefer. Yeah. So that's why I would spring for full self-driving. And we've also seen full self-driving has only gotten more expensive over time. Yeah. The good thing is, though, for those of you who are considering a purchase, you don't have to buy it when you first get the card. You can right. always add it. It's a software option. Your car already comes with the hardware that's necessary. And if, if you have an older car that only has Autopilot 2.5, that's maybe a used car that you're buying, that should be upgradable. Even supposedly the uh, Autopilot 2 can be upgraded to Mm -hmm. Autopilot 3 and full self-driving. And I actually know several people that bought full self-driving right after they bought their car. So one, they could put it on a credit card. Yep. Uh, just be careful with that. I'm not going to go into how you need to spend your money, but okay. just be careful with that. It can cost you a lot more than 7K in the long run if you leave that balance. But also, when you go to register your car, especially here in Colorado, it's based off, and I think it's actually in the U.S. in general. Some states are different. Yep. But it's based off the purchase price here. So... I would have to register my car based on the purchase price of adding full self-driving with the actual car itself. So it's actually going to be more expensive to register the car than buying full self-driving after the fact. So there's a, there's a lot to think about, too, when you want to buy full self-driving. Now, I know back when the federal tax credit was like 7500 bucks or even the 3875 that it went to, a lot of people would wait to buy full self-driving until they got their tax refund and use that money. Um, but yeah... Personally, I'm a full self-driving owner. That's I what I would buy. definitely appreciate. I use Navigate on autopilot every time I drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Especially with road trips. Yep. Um, somebody said, what Tesla do you think is the best? I think this is where we're going to differ. Yeah. They're, it, again, and they're, they're all very similar, but it depends on what you're looking for. It right? really does. Yeah. I still prefer the Model S, I think. I like it the best. Even, you know, it's, I'm still happy with the one that I have, which is a S100D, which is almost three years old, but mm -hmm. it's really similar. It's only missing a few features from what the, the latest Model S is, the Raven uh, long range And really, has. if you got the FSD computer and maybe a new MCU... Just, it's almost equivalent. The only yeah. thing that would be different would be that new suspension that they have, which is nice, yeah. but it's not... I don't need a brand new car just for the suspension. So I'm happy with my car, but but I'm going to stick with the Model S. I think it's great for for road trips. It's comfortable for you know, if you have, you know, if you don't have seven passengers or whatever, it it's it's going to be good for road trips and it and it has a lot of cargo room with that hatchback. It does. It is I I am a huge fan of S. Don't get me wrong, but the 3 I think is what gets it for me right now. Hopefully it transfers to the Y. Uh, but it's just like the new tech that those cars have. I love the new air vent. I love, love, love the horizontal screen. They really need to bring that to SNX refresh. Um, yeah. There's a lot that they've done on 3 that I would love to see in SNX. That's why I wondered. So when once we see, you've seen the Y. I yeah. had to miss that event last year, but you've written the right. And I'm wondering, maybe my ch answer will change once I see the Model Y, once we get it delivered. I don't know. That's I true. still think the Model S looks cooler, looks sexier. Model S, I think, the is, styling, I think is the better. best looking. Yeah. For and, sure. I, and I do still like having that second uh, instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. Yeah. I know you can you can totally get used to driving the Model 3 without that second screen, but I'd like it how you can put different things there because you could put either navigation or music or you can put the energy graph. You can just have a lot more things going on there and on the main screen than you can on the Model 3 or the Model Y. Yeah, def oh, you totally can. I certainly agree with that. <clears throat> um, yeah. Let's see here. Sorry, trying to make our way down everyone's question. Somebody said, do I regret selling my first Model S? Um, no, it was Autopilot 1. So... I don't. It's because <laughs> Autopilot two, even though you know you upgraded, and you got Autopilot two. Yeah. It was still a huge leap from Autopilot one. Oh, it's a massive leap, and I think it's just gonna. Well, it's just obviously gonna be getting better and better. Can you move the camera back? Oh, yep. Let me move this back over here real quick, so you guys can see chat messages. 
But yeah, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, you sold it when you, you know it was good. You sold it when you did, but, but yeah, it, but, you know, you got to enjoy the model, the autopilot too, and and I enjoy autopilot too. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see here. Oh, and it just jumped to the end. Let's see. Um, Love Reason said, would you recommend getting the long range Model 3 over the standard range plus just for the extra miles or is it worth it? I, th- I think that kind of depends on, on where you live and, and how what, far away the supercharger and where you're going to where you're going to drive. Exactly. And what you want out of the car, because um, there's some other differences, too. So if you kind of look here. Um, the all wheel drive or long range includes some other different kind of nice things like heated seats in the rear. Uh, you get premium connectivity for a year, but that's what $9 a month. Yeah. So it's not, so it's only like 120 value. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, but some things are harder to add. The premium audio could be harder to add into a car. Um, the led fog lamps, if you're super into that. I don't know. And you might mention, you know, we did have an SR Plus for about three weeks back yeah. in September of last year. We went I think there. that's the shortest time I've ever owned a car for. Yeah, so we had that for a few weeks, and it was a great car. And, and for the price, it was amazing. But but uh, it was not all-wheel drive, and we kind of wanted all-wheel drive. And, and so you know, it was the end of the quarter. We went ahead and just traded that car in after only having it for three weeks. But we were able to drive it on a road trip from Kansas City all the way back to, to the Denver area. No problem. It only took us, you know, a few minutes extra at each supercharger. But you're able to still make road trips with it just fine. Oh, yeah. It was no problem. Um, somebody said, uh, when's your Japan toy coming home? So right now, um, not sure. Yeah, you got some pictures. Of I, that I can't something? really talk about it right now. But there will be a video this week talking about some things. And then we'll kind of see what happens. But basically, to recap, we have another Model 3, a, model, a Performance Model 3, which has been totally modded out by Unplugged Performance, and it has been in Japan, or on its way to Japan, for almost six months now. So, Well, I think there were other car shows and a bunch yeah, of other okay, things yeah, I forgot before we, that. Because it was sent to SEMA in Las Vegas, so that was back in November. But yeah. basically, it's been traveling around without us uh, for nearly six months. Yeah, so very excited for that to come home, though. Um, somebody said, how would you purchase a Tesla if you have money in the bank since they don't accept cards? Yeah. If they would accept credit cards that we would get so many miles, that would be awesome. Um, it's really up to you. There's a bunch of different ways you could go about it. Some people choose to just pay all cash. Some people choose to just get a loan and use that cash to invest to in turn help make their car payment. Um, there's a bunch of different ways. Personally, I don't know. I've done both. <laughs> so I guess that's not much help. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Jacob has been a subscriber since 2016. Well, since the beginning. So he might have seen that taste test Tuesday. You might have video. seen the taste test Tuesday. And for that, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Or the original <laughs> or the original Gigafactory 1 tour. That was uh, one of the very first videos we like, did. Like, literally, I started doing all my videos on my cell phone and would keep having to reshoot them until I didn't mess up so I could just publish them instantly because I didn't edit at all. I didn't know how. Yeah, it was... But yeah, it, was, it all started back there with the Autopilot 1 Model S and that first gigafactory event that we got invited to yeah it was pretty funny um let's see here well somebody's asking oh uh james says for us folks here in colorado there's a five thousand dollar tax credit unfortunately it is not five thousand now it's dropped to four thousand for 2020 um but yeah you still do have that unfortunately yeah there's no federal which is a big bummer how does internet in the car work well, there's no Wi-Fi hotspots, yeah, so no, yeah. it's not something you use to connect your phones to, but basically if you're on the MCU, the main screen in the car, you know, it's got a web browser and it's got, uh, you know, uses the cellular signal, but you cannot, you know, connect your own vice- devices to that cellular signal or yeah, that Wi-Fi I know hotspot, some, I should say. I know some cars offer that. Yeah, I don't really um, see the need for it because if your device already has it, then, you know, your, your device itself could actually... Yeah turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot. And for those of you who don't want to pay that $10 a month for that premium connectivity package, you can actually use your phone, create a Wi-Fi hotspot, 
connect your car to that while you're driving, mm. and you can actually you know, stream music and do some of the other things. You're still not going to get the satellite maps and live traffic and a few other things, but uh, you, can, you can still do that. Yeah. Uh, Love Reasons asks, is the premium audio a huge difference? So going from the SR Plus, well, actually going from the performance to an SR Plus Model 3 and then to an all-wheel drive Model 3, I would say the premium audio is a big deal for me because I'm all about that bass. I don't have that clip ready. Yeah. But anyway, I really enjoy it. I You can do a lot more with the audio. Yeah. So The sound's still uh, pretty good, though. It's, it's in, still in the good. Plus. It's good. But I definitely think that uh, premium audio is is a lot better. Yeah. Um, somebody, Terrence, is asking, when Tesla upgrades my hardware 2 to 3, is it possible to upgrade the MCU as well? Uh, Elon has said you Maybe. can. It's just not necessarily worth it. Um, if we can, I think we will. Yeah, and that's that's one thing. It's like technically it might not be required. We've heard uh, from someone who looks at the code that you don't mm. need MCU yeah. 2 in order to have Autopilot 3. And so I could see Tesla maybe just upgrading to Autopilot 3 and not doing the MCU, but hopefully they will offer that as an option for those people who do want to get those additional features. Mm -hmm. Chris is saying, I know Autopilot 2 is better, but I love my free supercharging sunroof and huge oh, yeah. frunk. Uh, that's exactly. The frunk, yeah. Yes. All my friends with an older S, that's the reason yeah. they haven't bought a new one is because they use that frunk for yeah. so much because it was you massive. Can, you can actually fit in there. I have been in the frunk of an yeah. old uh, uh, rear-wheel drive Model S. It, it, it is huge. Yeah. But I, I do appreciate my sunroof, panoramic sunroof. Yeah, I wish they would bring that back. Yeah, uh, who knows? Maybe with the new Plaid Model S they will. Hopefully. But I also do appreciate that free supercharging still, when it's especially on road yeah. trips. We, now, you know, we, though, if you are buying a new one, you still can get free supercharging yes, on SNX. With the new SNX. So just FYI. Um, Gantry says, where do you get the Model X seats? eBay. So I actually mm -hmm. bought them from totaled cars. Um, so I think it's that one... Is just regular cloth yep. or regular white seats, and then this one back here is the perforated. Perforated, so two, they don't match 100% just because they are two different generations, but they still have the seat belts and everything oh, yeah. intact. Like everything you know. work, he's gonna lock himself in. Watch you know, this safety first, you know. <laughs> Andy's got the cup holder too. I don't know if you yeah, can see that. Yeah, I'm using the cup holder here, and it's got the USB port as well. Here, we'll do this. Yeah, check that out. So, so yeah. Yeah, all kinds of fun with that. Um, Harris asks, are you guys buying a Cybertruck? Well, right now we have a reservation for two of them, a dual motor and a tri-motor. And whichever one comes first, definitely keeping. Hopefully it's a tri-motor because that's what I ultimately want. Yeah, and the um, reason we have those two reservations, we don't need two trucks, but when we first made the reservation, we ordered the dual motor one because it was said that that was going to be coming out. I think they said there wasn't going to come out first, but then we found out later they said the tri-motor will be released first. So instead of trying to switch the reservation, we just made a second reservation because yeah. it's $100 and it's refundable. So uh, we'll get whichever one comes out first and we'll cancel the other reservation. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's asking, uh, what day did you get your Model 3? So let's think about this. When did I which, get the Performance? Which one? <laughs> we have had five Model 3s. So Oh, we have? Yeah. I, mean, oh. I can send you the link for that, but but basically, yeah, well, it's a little ridiculous. When did we get the performance though? That was in September of twenty eighteen seventeen because no twenty eighteen twenty eighteen yeah yeah September twenty eighteen and then the SR Plus was in September of twenty nineteen and the all wheel drive that was also September twenty nineteen. <laughs> So, no, wait, wasn't that November? Oh, no, it was end of quarter. It was end That's of quarter. Right. So those yeah. Were, yeah, so so basically we've had like five Model 3s. One of them was very short. Uh, two of them were actually, you know, mm. less than a month. Yeah. So, yeah. Or no, three of them. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I guess the other one that we drove out to Nevada. I don't know. We had that about a month. Uh, oh, okay. Two, it was close. Six weeks, something like that. Um, Christian's saying, what about Tesla hiring for production jobs in Lanthrop? Oh, yeah. That's, oh yeah, because that's another, I think that's, I've seen pictures of that building. Yeah. Um, so maybe they'll be doing some construction or, you know, manufacturing there as well. Yeah, I mean, they could easily start bringing some of their maybe more supplier constricted parts. I think they can start bringing some of that in house. If anything, it would just help their bottom line because it's that many less people they have to keep cutting cause, in. Because besides the battery pack, which they assemble at the Gigafactory in Reno, right. and they built some motors there. They also build, I believe, all of the seats in the cars yeah. in-house. Yeah. And so, you know... Originally, I believe it was 
um, contracted, and yeah. then they brought it in house yeah. because they like couldn't keep up, and it wasn't Delays. up to standard. So it's so. like I could see, you know, maybe if that stuff is still located in Fremont, they can move it to Lanthrop or one of these yeah. other locations, and that would free up more room. Uh, because as we saw a couple weeks ago, Elon tweeted uh, like the layout of the Gigafactory One versus the Gigafactory Two. Yeah, and you know, Gigafactory One has grown year, year after year, and and the layout though, the way that uh, cars, when they're assembled, moves through the factory is not. Uh, you know, it's from not very to, efficient from A to B. Whereas you you see the Gigafactory too, how it's laid out, it, it just goes in one long loop, and it's just you know they learned from uh, from Gigafactory one and from the Fremont factory, yeah. and uh, they set it up much differently. So here you can kind of see. Uh, let's just go here. Um, this was in the investor relations uh, po uh, PDF that they released. You can definitely see Fremont here, th they did a lot of making it work with what they had. Whereas in Shanghai, it was custom built. So they made it flow much, much easier. So hopefully, I don't know what all they could move around here, but you never know. It could be interesting to see what they could do. Okay, let's see. Michael, hey, how's it going? Um, thoughts on battery day and what it means to the lineup. Will we see a new battery architecture? Or will the 75 and 100 go away? So I don't think we're going to see a new architecture this soon. I think they're going to do a lot of recapping on where they started and what they're at now. I don't know if they're going to mention too much of the future. It, it would be interesting, though, because there's been some speculation for years as to when the S and X... We'll yeah. start using the the new cells that the Model 3 has had and that the Model Y will have. So it would be interesting to see if they do ever change the battery pack. And with the Plaid Model S coming out... The maybe, Plaid has definitely got to have something new, I think. Yeah, so it so it's possible there we will be seeing those new... What, the, what, the 2170 cells in the S and X instead of just those 18650. Uh, GI Shock says, I remember the catch-up windshield wiper test. Oh, yeah, the Will It Wipe video. That's another classic everybody <sighs> should watch. That was such a good one. Will It Wipe. Where that we, was we a really good one. The, the, uh, the wipers the, the, to see how well they worked. And we used ketchup, cornflakes, a Big Mac... And it worked quite well with most of the... Uh, and actually, Carpathy used our video in one of his presentations when he was talking yeah. about... Yeah, he's basically like in charge of all that. Yeah. Um, he was talking about like how they have developed windshield wipers to be used off of the cameras rather than just like a little optical sensor yeah. that most use. And he actually pulled up our video in front of his whole... like. That that was Chad a fun like, that was a fun video, but a little bit of trivia on that. We did one of the last things we did was a Big Mac, and you know when we were cleaning stuff up oh afterwards, man. we never found one of the meat patties. So we never found it. I don't know where it went, and that car has since been sold. It, it never had any problems. But I we, mean, we never found that patty. So if you find it, it, it probably still looks the same as when we did that video like two years ago. God, that was so so funny. That was fun. That was hilarious. Good times. Will it wipe? Uh, that was definitely a fun video. Um, let's see here. Sandro says, when are you getting the Model Y delivery performance trim? So, yeah, I did order performance white on white Model Y. Uh, hopefully it's one of the first ones. I guess we'll see. I would hope so. Yeah, we are hoping. I mean, Elon and others have said March, but we're hearing that, you know, we're hoping that February you know, might be possibility. Yeah, so... And you never know, that might be California, it might be employees like they did with the Model 3 yep. when they did the first delivery of like 50. But, you know, hopefully in the next six weeks we will start to be seeing a lot of Model Y deliveries. Yeah. I, I, I'm hopeful I'll be pretty high up there. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, Sharp says, how often do you rotate your tires on your Model 3? I've heard tires in electric vehicles burn up quicker. Is that true? So they only burn up quicker if you do a lot of hard accelerations. Yeah. Um, which I have found out in the performance model three, yeah. but normally I would just stick to what you kind of do anywhere between like five and 10,000 miles, I believe is what's recommended. Yeah. I was just, re you know, I know you've gone through some tiles tires really quickly, yeah. especially when we're down at the racetrack and in, in Pikes Peak International Raceway. Yeah. But I was just reading a thread from some other who said they just did like a 5,500 mile road trip and they, the, the tread wear was like one thirty second or something yeah. like that. And if you multiply it out, it, it's, 
those tires la would have lasted, you know, 50,000 miles or something, or 60,000 miles. So it just depends on how you drive it. Yeah, it's, um, it's not bad if you don't do a lot of hard accelerations. Now, if you're racing the car and everything, yeah, you're going to burn through them real quick. Or doing donuts without the... Uh... Oh, yeah, don't do donuts either in your Model 3S, I mean, or X, even for that matter. Because, yeah, that'll burn through them really quick, too. Um, let's see... So Steve has a good question. Since the Cybertruck's structural strength comes from its shell, how can they do crumple zones? So it could just be a <laughs> shell that like is the main cabin and some extensions that everything else kind of fits into. I, I imagine they have to do some kind of crumple zone. Yeah, because otherwise you don't Because otherwise want... the crash test rating is going to be awful. Yeah, because if the car is still one piece, but the inside of, you know, the contents, the people... Aren't. aren't yeah that's not going to be good so it'd be interesting to see we haven't heard much on that yet no we really haven't but hopefully soon but that is a very good question that a lot of people are wondering um somebody said uh, 40 year fitness said stock was crazy bought 50 shares monday morning mm -hmm. by tuesday up nine thousand dollars <laughs> gotta love it yep. um my email said mcu2 upgrade any news unfortunately not yet i wish i did have something but but every time I try to schedule an appointment, it gets canceled. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully one of these days. I mean, they have been making yeah. those since, you know, last quarter of last year. They've been uh, doing a lot of AP2 upgrades for Model S and X. But those cars, again, have only been ones that have been built since March of 2018. Yeah. Uh, Michael said, suggestion for your Performance Model 3 tour after doing the Japan track. Maybe take it to Shanghai F1 track. <laughs> Maybe other countries, perhaps even Nürburgring. So I would love to do that. Right now is probably not a great time to go to Shanghai uh, or China in you general. You were just in Shanghai, you know, visiting Gigafactory 3. I was. But your car wasn't there, but yeah. And it's just a, the issue is going from like country to country or U.S. to other countries is just logistically very challenging. And a lot of paperwork. And, and, and I think more than paperwork, the cost. It does cost, yes. But the cool thing is once we get it back... I'm sure Eric will be taking it to a few racetracks around. Oh yeah, the it'll States. it'll be doing Tesla Corsa events, and I'm there'll sure be some road trips. Maybe, I'll probably go down to Dallas, maybe or Bandamere, perhaps in Colorado in the Denver oh, yeah. area. There'll be a lot of stuff with that. I can't wait to get it back. Um, KK says, any new superchargers coming in Southwest Colorado? There's not uh, not. Far southwest. We keep looking to see if they're going to have one in Durango. They still don't have one there yeah. yet. And they're supposed to be having one in Telluride, but uh, I heard they might be putting it in Ridgeway. There's been some uh, like uh, town meetings where people have been talking about one being mm -hmm. in Ridgeway. So that's the closest we've seen for southwest Colorado. I know I've been spotted. Abstract Ocean said Dallas, exclamation point, exclamation point. Oh. My plans have well, been yeah, spoiled. Well, yeah, you'll have to stop by and visit Abstract Ocean. <laughs> no, that's actually probably why I would go there. Yeah. So... Not, not like you have any family or anything that was there, but yeah. <laughs> Andrew says, when will the roadster go into production? Good question. Well, that's a good question. We are waiting eagerly to hear yes. when the roadster will go into production. Very, very eagerly and very impatiently because I really would love my roadster. Um, but now let's see. I'm just going to look on Tesla's site and we can kind of go to this together. Click on roadster. It used to say 2020, I believe. Yeah, and I heard some people say 2021, but I never heard any announcement of it being. I think the to people that said 2021 were just saying, "Well, we haven't heard anything yet, so they've delayed it." Yeah, yeah. No, I don't see anything on here because it has like, been over two years since we first got to see it unveiled at the semi event. Yeah, there's nothing on here about this. Oh, thank God it didn't have my credit card information. <laughs> Holy crap! I should have checked that first. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, nothing on here about it. So I, that is a very good question, and I'm honestly not sure. So for those of you who have made a reservation or earned one through the referral program, you've had the same amount of news that we have, Yeah, so, which is no news yet. Um, Harris, what was your question again? I don't... Sorry, it like... All the comments, like, stay there, and then all of a sudden it skips to a bunch. So I, I might have missed it. Sorry about that. Just throw it back in the chat if you can. Can you put it on the vertical? Um, will S and X use same design as three and Y horizontal screen in the future? So yes. actually on this, one of the cars, I believe it was the blue one that was spotted at the Nürburgring Model S, had a horizontal screen that was off of the actual dash. So 
I'm thinking there will be. Let me see if it's, I can find a quick it's photo. Possible. I hope, though, um, that even if they do still have... I don't mind anything about them switching to a horizontal screen. I just hope they still have a second screen or a heads-up display or something like that. But I hope if they do a horizontal screen, I hope it's bigger than Model 3. Oh, yeah. I definitely think it would be 17-inch like we saw in the Cybertruck. Yeah. At least 17. Uh, that would I can't... be awesome for watching movies, just like you know Model 3 cars can now with Netflix. Imagine that with 17-inch screen and a Model S. Exactly. That would be really awesome. Um, I'm trying to find that picture for you guys. Let me see here. I but can't find it now. I wonder if they like yeah. somehow scrubbed something. But it was interesting images. though, because you did say you, you, there were two different like prototypes for the Plaid uh, version of the S that's coming out. Yeah. And they've had the screen, one was horizontal, one was vertical. So they're still trying to decide, or at the time those were made, they were trying to decide, you know, which way is it going to be. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on here but i know like a lot of like the bigger news articles and everything covered it so yeah it would be really nice to see a horizontal screen um somebody says 21 700 only going to be used for s and x as of right now but yeah um <laughs> Let's see. Oh, see, I just skipped a bunch of comments. Sorry, trying to go back. Um, Christian Laguna Seca. Yeah, I'm going to try to book Laguna once the car comes back to the States. You've been, is that, you've done that one already. I did Laguna yeah. in that Performance Model 3, yeah. but it's since gotten a lot of other fun mods done, and I want to give it a go again. Because yeah. I actually, did I lose I don't think I did Laguna with... Randy? No, that was the... No, I don't think I did Laguna with the coilovers. I think I still had the springs. I can't quite remember. Yeah, you changed but anyway, the like four or five times, so it's hard to remember. Yeah, anyway, yeah, definitely going to hit up Laguna again as much as I can. Um, let's see. Um, so someone's asking, traded my S for three in November in Miss Air suspension. Does the Model Y have it? That's a good question, too. We have <laughs> no idea. Um, I would hope so, since it is a taller car. Uh, I would hope they would do that. and Because they even... I think Elon even said they would try to bring air suspension to Model 3 eventually. Eventually. He did say that long ago. And one thing, too, I noticed on the performance Model Y, it said that it will have a lowered suspension. So, I don't know. Maybe the initial ones might oh, yeah. only have springs. That's true. But that's one, that's one place where those coilovers come... It's not the same as an air suspension, but it does allow you to adjust. Gives you some flexibility. Adjust it, you know, higher or lower. It's not something you're going to do every trip, though. Yeah. Uh, Mitch says, you're going to be mobbed whenever you go out in your custom Model 3. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of get it anyway because all our cars are very particularly wrapped, so everyone knows who it is. Yeah, and definitely stay, say hi if you see us at a supercharger or definitely. driving around. It's nice to, to meet new people, yep. meet fans. Harris says, are you guys planning to make your cyber truck a true off-roader, and do you plan any aftermarket mods? Yes and yes. I'm sure Abstract Ocean will have some pretty sweet mods for cyber truck, so definitely going to be hitting them up for some. And then as well as being a true off-roader, I think there's a lot of fun we could have with that. I really do. Maybe take it rock crawling. It'd be nice to to go on some camping trips or something. Oh yeah, too. camping it's, trips. Like the uh, one of the images Tesla even showed had a tent in the back. Yeah. So yeah, totally. But the cool thing is with that rolling tunnel cover and stuff, you could you don't even need a tent. There's enough room back in that bed that you could you could rough it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or you could use a regular tent. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Somebody's asking, Randy's asking, what's the difference in insurance price for Model 3 versus a midsize SUV like a CX-5? I honestly don't know what a CX-5 would run. Yeah, but it, things we've seen and heard with insurance, is, it varies greatly depending on the company. Some people you know, have added a Model 3, and it costs less than a minivan or some other cars they have. So I would just call around. There's you know those sites where you can submit your information and get quotes from multiple companies. But some people are pleasantly surprised to find that it's actually cheaper for a Model 3 than for some luxury like BMWs and stuff. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. It, it is, well, I don't know, <clears throat> usually a cheaper car, but it's a safer car too. Yeah, uh, Tiger Roll, can't wait to see you on the racetrack again. When are you going? 
I can't say exactly yet because we're still waiting on transport of the car. But it'll be announced on like all my socials and everything when I can go because we'll be doing a big meetup and yeah, as soon as the car gets back. Um, not familiar with your situation, James. Sorry. Um, stackable gold. Anyone's thought on Tesla revoking autopilot? Oh yeah, let's talk about this. Okay, oh, yeah. so if you go on Tesla's site, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about it while I try to find this. If you go on Tesla's site though, they actually say if the car is sold to a dealership, um, something along the lines of like it'll lose like its supercharging and I believe like FSD and stuff. But if it's sold privately, it doesn't. Um, do you remember what all it said, David, or anything? Yeah, I know that if it's sold privately, it will keep those full self-driving and, and autopilot options that you've already purchased. But if it does come back to Tesla, they can remove those. Or if it comes back to Tesla and then it's sold like you know through an auction or something to a dealership, then they can remove those options. And one reason they said they do that is so that they can keep the price down and they can sell the car a lot cheaper exactly. by not including those software options. Yeah, so I mean... It's kind of funky on this situation. I I mean I've read a lot about it and I just I I know I think the the dealer should have done more work into it I, and not just yeah. sold it like that. I I've seen some people posting their complaints and they show, you know, the listing for a car dealer and then what they get is not the same. But that's not only happening with Tesla's car dealerships have always done that. You don't necessarily get, you can't just trust what they say in the ad. You have to have a contract, you know, that says it's specifically what you're getting. And if you get a car and it doesn't have those features on there, then I think you need to talk to the dealership because they were selling that car to you, not Tesla. Yeah. Um, it is a very odd situation, but yeah, I, I mean... Tesla, though, when they sell the cars, you know, they spe they specify if it has full self-driving or enhanced autopilot or whatever version of autopilot it had. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, definitely, I think you can go by... I mean, it's not to say that there's no mistakes ever being made. I'm sure there have been some, but it's not something that they're going through and, and stealing or turning off full self-driving for all used cars. It's not happening. Yeah, I'm trying to see, like in any of my car profiles if it actually says um but it's it's just taking a few seconds to load one thing that i noticed with that latest update the 2020.4.1 is there is that additional vehicle information screen they list out what your hardware you have and they don't indicate if you have full self-driving software purchase and i think that would be the ideal place where you could list it so if you are looking to buy a used car you could go right to that screen and see what is included with it yeah, hopefully absolutely. they will be adding that you know sometime in the near future. Yeah, but I know I've seen it somewhere on Tesla's site where they actually go into detail, and so that's one reason why like always try to get something from Tesla if you're buying a uh, used car, just so that it's all in writing. Um, KK says, "Are we going on the Sounds of Silence trip?" Not sure. We yet. haven't discussed that yet this year. Yeah, it's possible. Is but, that in May? Um, you know, yeah, it is May. Uh, we'll have to discuss that. It's possible. We were you know, always having plans that change, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Now, so back to the, because I see some other people commenting on the autopilot. Back to that Tesla, I'm pretty, like, they should have removed it and made it very clear probably when they sold it at auction uh, instead of, like, kind of leaving it on there. But well, I think the dealer went by the... Um, original like purchase car sticker i think that's what i heard in one of the articles so i it is very weird but tesla did it to auction so i'm i know why they would have removed it but yeah it's a very weird position for sure um let's see here um francisco says studio looking nice thank you we're working on it we got a bunch of cars. I've got some, oh, ooh, uh, up there. I've got some stuff from Komodo when I visited there. We've got two puppies right here. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey says, do you think you'd ever quit your day job for YouTube full time? Trust me, it <laughs> goes by my mind every day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
having to deal with your own insurance and everything like healthcare on your own is kind of a pain in the butt. And I, I have a good thing going with my day job. Yeah. So I suppose though, if you had several million subscribers, it would be a lot easier to answer that question. Totally. Like if I was a <laughs> lot bigger and had more subscribers and everything, I could see potentially doing that. But I mean, right now we, we have fun with it. We have fun with it. Um, let's see here. Somebody wants to know how we convince each other to let us buy so many Tesla products. Well, I mean, he buys his and I buy mine. And we, and, and, you know, we've purchased like 10 Teslas over the past, what, three and a half years, but we don't own all of those. We've, we've, you know, sold them, resold them. And, uh, so, so currently we own four Teslas in the household. Yep. Uh, Tiger Roll is saying, I'd like to see a Tesla Cybertruck entered in the Baja 1000. That would be really cool. But yeah, I don't know how you'd deal with the range. Maybe a mobile supercharger? That could be a potential. Um, but yeah, tricky situation. Yeah, definitely aftermarket suspension <laughs> if you're going to do a Baja yeah. 1000. Um, let's see. Somebody, Eugene's asking, what is the total cost for the coil suspension I mounted? On the Model 3. We had several different suspensions. On yeah, so right now it has a very specific race type that's been revalved a bunch. But I want to say, like, their standard coilovers are, like, 2,000 maybe? Maybe 2,500? Let me look. I'll get you. And that's just for the hardware, right? Yeah, it's just for the hardware. Install is really going to depend where you are. Uh, I think if you're in California, you can get in, get it installed for maybe a couple hundred bucks. I know some places like out here in Colorado are quoting me like a thousand. So it really depends where you live. Um, but yeah, the coilovers are listed at like 2300 to 2500 Not terrible. Maybe I uh, have to put those on the Y. We'll see when we get it. I want to see how it rides first. Um, let's see. <laughs> Crystal says Dallas. Da yeah. Daryl just uh, sent you five bucks. Thank oh, Darryl. thank you, Daryl. I have not gotten down to that, but thank you. Really appreciate that. Oh, the studio looks... Yep, thank you. Um, P, Peter, doubt the factory will open again on the 10th. Yeah, I'm curious to see that too. Hopefully, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was another delay, but hopefully it won't. China's made a lot of exemptions for Tesla and really helped them along... Not necessarily exemptions, but really helped them along the way in getting this Gigafactory all up and done. So it wouldn't surprise me if they can try to try something. But again, as long as it's safe for the country to do. Because we don't need this coronavirus going any crazier than it already has. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, I agree with you, Stackable Gold. Definitely. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't buy a car with cruise control just to have it revoked. But if you buy a private sale Tesla from an individual who actually bought it themselves or bought it from another owner, it, it nothing changes on it. It's going to stay the same. It's when you buy it from uh, like a dealer. Some uh, Actually, I don't even think if you bought it from a dealer, it would change. I think this case is very uh, kind of odd because this dealer bought it as a supposed lemon at auction. So supposedly Tesla was removing that before even auctioning it. I don't know, maybe the paperwork just didn't get pushed through in time. It is a very odd position to be in. I certainly agree with that. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Oh, wow. I just missed a bunch of messages again. <laughs> okay, sorry. It keeps like skipping a bunch. Um, let's see here. Someone says there, Dan actually is buying his first Tesla in May. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that'll You'll be enjoy awesome. It. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I, again, sorry, James, I'm unfamiliar with the situation. I will have to read up on that. Um, let's see. Somebody was saying... Uh, they're talking about the radiation levels. Yeah, I mean, it depends how concerned you are with radiation levels, but like uh, Steve is saying, if you have, like, a pacemaker 
or anything like that, you won't have an issue with your Tesla. I Didn't actually know several owners with pacemakers that don't have any issue. Didn't you do a, a you did a video too? Yep. Yeah, um, and we found levels, but again, they weren't that high. And it really depends too on what you consider as too high. There are standards, but a lot of people like there's articles on both sides of that that will <laughs> say that everyone's wrong. And it, and it varied too, depending on which car and the age of the car. I think the newer cars were much less. Lower. It wasn't yeah. huge on the other ones, but it was like almost not measurable on some of the newer ones. Yeah. Uh, how optimistic are you on Tesla hitting the late 2021 production date target? Production date target for the Cybertruck? Uh, good question. I don't know. They Elon said they have a lot of work to do on the Cybertruck, especially that like big body that they're designing for it. So hopefully, I'm hopeful. We'll say that. They're going to surprise us with the Model Y early, so I'm hopeful they'll continue that trend. Uh, Mike wants to know what kind of dogs we have. Oh, I already told him the Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Oh, oh are you commenting on some of that? Yeah, I saw okay, Mike cool. Logan Perfect. said that he had uh, used to have a Ridgeback as well. Nice. Yeah, I'm answering a few questions there. Sweet. Uh, Jonathan uh, said, just got here a bit ago. Any talk about Giga Texas? Yeah, we just talked about like how we think maybe that's where they could build the Cybertruck and also help Tesla kind of get into Texas a little bit more so so that they can operate more stores and service and all that jazz. Because currently to buy a Tesla in Texas, you can't. Don't you have to buy that at neighboring states? I think they can... Or wait, it can be delivered to your house. Yeah, but you have to... At least how it used to be, you had to buy it, but they had to process the paperwork out of That's the state. That's what it was, And okay. you had to, like, prepay. And at one time, they wouldn't even ship the car until you had paid. So that really made the process difficult. So I don't know if it's still that way, but that, that would be a hassle if you're trying to buy one in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Randy's saying, how many in the household? So we have oh, three yeah, of us here. Yeah, I mentioned... And then... Four cars, three people. And three dogs. Yeah, and three dogs. And some reptiles. Oh, yeah, reptiles, yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, here's, we might be getting another dog. Oh, oh they no, just, heard, going to see they the just other heard the other dog downstairs, so they went to check out what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts with the additional solar panels that we installed? Uh, they're, they're doing really well, and we're yeah. definitely seeing the solar last longer through the day. Starts a little bit earlier just because since these have different, it, it has a different inverter and it has optimizers on each panel, so it is able to use the smallest amount of light and still produce some energy. So we're seeing that it starts a little earlier, lasts a little longer, except for the last couple of days because we did have a lot of snow. We had over two feet of snow in the last week, and those panels are kind of on the northwest side, so they don't get nearly as much direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. But on days when there isn't snow and we do have you know a sunny day, we are definitely seeing it add, you know, it's not 25% or 20%, but we've seen it like I think as high as 18% of the energy coming from that new array of 3.9 kilowatts. Yeah. Uh, Randy likes to watch you swipe in the background answering yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, this actually helps a lot, though, having him back there answering, because then no, sometimes that. questions get to be a lot. It just bumps all at once. Um, Luke wants to know if we know why Tesla stocks dropped. I mean, they jumped so fast. Well, I'm pretty sure we kind of Part of it was the, the announcement of the delay for the Model 3 because of the China coronavirus. Yeah, that too. And a lot of stocks actually dropped because of that. It's, but also, it's actually having a worldwide right. effect. But for also, sure. you know, you see all the stories about how Tesla dropped 17 or 20 percent one day. But if they would have just looked at the story the day and two days before, it went up like 40 or 50 percent. Yeah. So it's like what goes up must come down. Well, but just it, like it's that, still up they, way more than what it was uh, two weeks ago. Just like that when the, all the news headlines were Elon Musk lost so Six, six billion, billion dollars. dollars. But they don't point out that he probably made $13 billion. The day before. And then he lost six of it. So he's still up seven billion yeah. or something. It's like... I know. love it how news agencies just yeah. twist it yeah. so much. Um, somebody wants to know if t Cybertruck should be built under a new company, not Tesla, to get that's, the $7,500 rebate. That's interesting. I've, I've heard other people talking about it's too. It's an interesting concept, but I don't see Tesla... I, I would be surprised if Tesla would if spin that spun off. it off, yeah. It, it would be nice if... The government would just bring those rebates back because right now the the companies are getting it are, are ones that have you know delayed putting out electric cars or, or they're not really actively selling them. So it'd be nice to yeah. reward companies that are actually building cars aggressively. 
Uh, Michael saying we're battery upgrade options removed. He can't seem to locate it in his Tesla account. They've been doing a lot of work with the online interface. So my guess would be it just disappeared briefly. <laughs> Worst case, I would uh, probably just try to fill out like the online request. Um, <laughs> let's see. Scott just donated. Oh, $2. thank you, Scott, for the two dollars <laughs> for the super chat. Cool. <laughs> FYI, just so you guys know, we're 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 laughing because Scott is the other roommate. He's the third person <laughs> in the household, the one that has. I'm the, not just like laughing at people yeah. for donating. I'm just. It's funny because. Yeah. He's our other room. So I guess he's upstairs watching the soup, the uh, the live stream. Um, Stack Gold says, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Cybertruck didn't have any mirrors when it was revealed." Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, that is correct. Are there plans to have mirrors on it? Or are they planning on waiting for Congress to allow cameras? I mean, by then, I'm hoping we can get cameras on that because there's really no reason any of the Teslas shouldn't be able to use cameras. The only thing I can think of is if there was like mud on the cameras. Yeah, and I know there's probably regulations that you have to have mirrors, but there's a way they could get around it. It seems like they could still have cameras, but they could perhaps have a set of mirrors that you, like, snap on or bolt on that are in the front or something like that. So, you know, you wouldn't need them out there unless you were having a problem with your cameras. Yeah. Abstract Ocean came in with the still have to pay in advance in Texas. It's okay. not too bad, yep. and the registration process takes a long time. So the free toll road since Texas doesn't allow the temp tag to be placed in the license plate area. That's a bummer. That's but hopefully nice. this, yeah. like, Giga Texas will remedy that. Yeah, and that is nice. They do get those toll road benefits. We don't get that in Colorado, but I know California, I think some other states mm -hmm. have that as well. Ooh, here's a good one. I love reasons saying, what is the biggest problems with Model 3s? Hmm. I, I don't know. I've heard one thing I've heard off and on over the last couple of years is just like um, some cracked glass. And so maybe it's not installed properly or, you know, the, the, or, you know, the way it's installed or something. That's one that I hear off and on. But it, it seems to come in cycles. I don't know. Yeah. Luke says, will old Tesla model prices go down as they come out with new ones? Definitely. Older tech is just going to. Yeah, and we've be a little bit cheaper. We've definitely seen that with like the Model S. You can get a, a used Model S that's a few years old for like thirty thousand dollars now. Those cars might have been one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a few years ago. So the prices really come down on the older cars. They might not have autopilot, but you know, even now we're seeing some autopilot two cars that are probably in the fifties, maybe in the forties if they have a smaller battery. Yeah. Um. Somebody, Jonathan, is saying should you discuss this too? But expectations or wish list for Battery Investor Day. I have a feeling it's going to be more of a like where they came from and where they're at now. Maybe a little bit into the future, but Tesla doesn't necessarily release a lot of future tech, like until it's basically ready to go into the car. Reason being that people <laughs> might delay their order. What's so funny about that? <laughs> Okay. He's reading some of the comments. Oh, okay. He's reading more comments. And okay. somebody just summoned Scott. So, oh, we can... <laughs> I guess I'll have to read some of the other comments. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that's going to be more of like the battery investor day, which is still cool and everything. Um, oh, yeah. Randy, $2, super <laughs> chat, summoning the Scott. Yeah. Scott, if you're watching, come down here and say hi. Yeah, he can just peek in, you know. Bring Brecken down. Um, let's see... I haven't had any issues with door handles on the Model 3. Yeah, because they're... A lot or the Model S, to be honest. I yeah. know Scott had a slight issue with one of his, but it was yep. replaced with the new iteration. But so I, I, out of my S, never any problems with the door handles. What is that? Three Model S's? We've had three Model S's. And or four. We had four Model S's. Oh, yeah, Because four. you had your had Autopilot 1. But we never had... Well, only one car has had problems with the door handles. Um, somebody else, uh, I just saw Thaddeus mentioned stateless turn signals. Um... Well, yeah, we did have a problem on one of the Model 3s where uh, they had a batch of the, the, I don't know, the turn signals had a problem with uh, the steering control uh, box or something. I forget the exact word. Yeah. But sometimes when you, like, would turn left, this turn signal would stay on and it would just stay on forever. But under warranty, they fixed that. It just took a few minutes. It came out on a mobile service visit, and we haven't had the problem since. So if you are having that issue, it might be related to it. You can just contact Tesla, set it up in the app and they should be able to take care of that for yeah, you. Yeah, I think uh, that was fixed mainly by software, was it not? No, no, they had to modify something in the steering control column. Ah, uh, uh, okay. But it, it's, yeah, basically it would, it, it wasn't a problem going right, but for some reason they, they had a bad batch of them and 
going left, it would just leave the turn signal on. Got and on. you know, some people do complain. He's, uh, I saw he mentioned curb rash. Uh, that is a problem, but that's you know. That's more not, of like a the user, driver. Yeah, it's like user error. Know, the, but maybe also because they do have big wheels and the and the tires are kind of like low profile. Yeah. But I mean, I don't have. I've had a couple Teslas and I only hit the curb once, and that was like when I first got it, and I have not had any curb rash on wheels. Now Scott, on the other hand, mm, well, he's had a, a little bit of curb rash, but he also drives his car a lot more than we do, and he's had a problem with a couple, well, three or however many flat tires from hitting potholes, but I've never. But had any it. car would have that. If yeah, you hit yeah. A again, it's not just Teslas. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any word on Model Y dimensions? I was actually just looking on the website for Tesla, and they do not list it under mm. their specs like they do Model 3 S and X. So I would imagine that'll be updated once they start deliveries, because otherwise, we'll just measure it and pu publish that. Yeah, we'll definitely have a comparison to the, the, the all of the other models that are currently out. Yeah. Well, yeah. We've got several Model Y videos planned once we take delivery. Oh, yeah. Um, Aries is saying Model 3 2020 doesn't come with grocery bag clips. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. In no, the, in the it, front, they actually, yeah. or, and they're saying, or did they take them off at the Tesla store? No, so they actually don't have them anymore. anymore. And um, some people were saying, although they weren't really grocery bag clips, I don't know. Some people say they were. Some people say they were just bolt covers. You yeah. can actually, though, if you want those. You can buy the part for like a dollar or something. Yeah, they're like a dollar and a half, two dollars. You just go to the parts desk and say, can you order this for me? And they will get them for you. And then you can have them. You can install them yourself. Or, if, you know, I've even heard some people having mobile service for some other purpose. And they brought those out and got them installed for free. Because really, it's just, it's, yeah, it, it takes a minute to do, do that one more time for us. Thank you. Uh, Bruce is asking if the monthly data entertainment traffic fees started yet. He got his Model 3 in December of 2018, so it's past the one-year mark. Oh, well, yeah. And he hasn't been notified or been charged yet. Yeah, he might check online on his account to see yeah. if it says, you know, some people, I know if it was a used car. So it was weird because for new cars, they started charging after like July of 2018, any new cars. But for used yeah. cars, for some reason, they grandfathered it in until like mid January 2020. So if you bought a used car, you are actually still grand, might still be grandfathered in with free premium connectivity for life. So, but you can just go to your profile yeah. on the Tesla website and check it out, and you can see it will tell you what your expiration date is or if you're locked in for life with that free premium connectivity. So, looking on mine, let me just make sure we're good here. Um, here is mine. And one of them. Or, yeah. yeah you but you can, can see it, yeah. you should have the premium connectivity tab and it'll say complimentary period ending on. And this is September 29th, 2020. This was a year. Um, yeah. But you can check that out. Does your other there. one? I guess none of yours have that anymore, do they? Because you got your... Uh, uh, well, none of them have it for free. Yeah. yeah. So, but the other one that we have, which is currently out of state, in, is uh, it still has the free premium connectivity for life. And of yeah. course, the Model S's both have it. Yep. So yeah, check that out. Um, some have said there have been issues with the Model Three door handles in very cold places. Okay, yeah. If the that, car sleeps outside. Yep. yep. I heard. I haven't heard about that recently. I heard about it last winter. So I. So it sounds know awful. But everything I've seen is if you just like smack it, it yeah. pops back. I know out. they did have a problem with the charge port, um, kind of getting frozen, depending on if you got some moisture in there. But I heard they redesigned that charge port, and they do have a, a an upgraded model available. So if you are in some of those colder climates and you are having problems with your older charge port on a Model Three, just fill out a you know a service appointment request, and they can probably get that swapped out for you. Yeah. Um, Vigram says, does Tesla transfer FSD when you trade in for an upgrade? Checking to see if you can do it from Model 3 to Model Y. Unfortunately, no. it is tied to the car. Yeah. That would be nice because we could save a lot of money because we have bought oh, several yeah. Teslas. Oh, yeah, that would have been really nice. And if you count how much we've spent on full self-driving, yeah, it's, it's added up. Yeah, that would be really, really nice. Uh, maybe in the future, but I, I kind of doubt it yeah. because that, that's a good profit center for them. Yep. And all that money for full self-driving really just goes back to them helping develop that and really just make it that much better. Um, let's see. On your cars, how many errors do you have? Have you discovered where paint is missing or very thin layer? 
I haven't had any issues with mine. We haven't had any on ours. I mean, some no. people have reported that. And, you know, there's always going to be, when you're building hundreds of thousands of vehicles, they're not all going to be 100% perfect. But luckily, we've been pretty lucky with all of ours. Yeah. We, we you know, and also it, things have gotten better over the years. With our initial Model S's, you know, we had a, a do list of a, a few things, and none of them were really that bad. But they took care of fixing all of those. But with the last couple of cars we've had delivered, I don't, I can't remember if we had any issues that needed to be addressed. Yeah. Um, Randy says, how much will the data cost? It is, I believe, nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. Any wrap for the Gemini wheels? Um, Pair, if you're wondering why they're white, I painted them. Um, I still have my silver set. But I actually painted the ones that were black when I bought them white. So, kind of fun. Um, Dan says, next road trip, question mark. David, don't forget your yeah, sunglasses. I just, I, I've been doing better at that, Dan. And, and today, you I, know. No, I don't, I don't believe we have. Haven't you lost those already? No. no. Well, but I always remember to take them. I may lose them <laughs> later, but I remember <laughs> to take them. And we just went on a little trip today up to up the mountains, and I had my sunglasses. But yeah, I did have to buy a pair back in September when we went on a road trip to pick up yeah. that SR Plus in Kansas City. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, Vikram, thank you for the two ninety nine super chat. Really appreciate that. And Daryl, thank you for the three dollars super chat. Any news about towing for Model Y? Um, every Model Y prototype we've seen had that little cover in the rear bumper for a hitch. I think so they, I'm going to think it's going to come I standard. I think they have to have it. Just like with, with the Model X when it came out, it wasn't standard. You know, they had right. like an accessory hitch and then they just went ahead and gave everybody the full hitch. But I, I bet they will do that with the Model Y because they're trying to put that as a car, you know, for, for as an SUV and people tow with their SUVs. They got to mm -hmm. they got to have towing on that. And it, it just helps the production line if they build them all the same yeah. too. Uh, Cuz right now Model 3s going to Europe have the hitch. Yeah, so and Model 3 is made for U.S. at least, I know. I'm not sure about Asia. Uh, but in the U.S., Model 3s don't come with the hitch. So it seems weird, but I think they should just make Dude, it. How about the Chinese the ones? Do they have that or not? I don't think they have the hitch. Something to check with, with Jay, because I know you've yeah. seen the Chinese built Model 3, and they are almost I actually have identical. a bunch of video of it. I'll have to go through that. Yeah, But yeah. I don't think they do. I think it's only Europe that gets the Model 3 yeah. hitch. But I know a lot of people in Europe do pull, uh, you know, those, like, campers and stuff like that, and they're small trailers, so they don't typically buy big pickup trucks and stuff in Europe, so that's why they need towing there. Yeah. Um, Raphael, do you think the interior accessories for Model 3 will fit on Model Y? Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. I think a lot of stuff will transfer over. The screen, I imagine, is the same size. So if you want to do like a screen protector, say from Abstract Ocean because they're awesome, uh, <laughs> yeah. link in description. Um, I imagine that's going to fit on Model Y, hopefully. Uh, I imagine the center console is probably going to be the same. So same thing it, with like I think center so, console wraps. So many the of lights, the lights, I imagine, would work. Yeah. So many of the parts are identical between the Model 3 and yeah. the Model Y that I think the vast majority of accessories will fit. I definitely am hopeful. And I know a lot of the accessory manufacturers are too because it's that they many have to redo everything. Last things yeah. they have to do. But I, I'm really thinking the center console will be the same. The screen should be the same. Um, any dashboard wrap or dashboard like carbon fiber cover, hopefully that works the same because now if we look here, um, you can see we have this. Let's look at the interior. The interior looks basically the same. So if we went up here and then all the way up, close, and then to model three, did order, and then look at that interior, kind of compare that. Those, I mean, minus being a slightly different view. Oh, actually though, good thing we looked at this. Now that we are looking at this. If you look right here on model three, you can see this line right here on this center console. Model Y? Mm. Uh, oh no, it's there. It's, it's there. The, yeah, the lighting is. It's yeah. there. It's just like this computer render is hard to see, but it yeah. is there. But I mean, everything else looks pretty darn identical. Yeah, not quite the same angle in those pictures. No, yeah. if you look up here at like the rear view mirror housing, it definitely looks like on the Y they drop that rear view mirror down a little bit. Probably because it is a taller SUV. Yeah, a little more headroom. Um, so everything else is looking pretty similar, though. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps a little bit. 
Um, let's see. The Tesla Tesla Semi, what happened to that? Been quiet. No, they're actually starting. I think they said they're going to start deliveries. Yeah, like a limited number to like... This one, quarter, right? To limited, I don't know if it's this quarter, but they are... I think it's definitely this year. And I think it's just a limited number of customers. So maybe ones that are close by uh, with very specific, you know, cargo routes. So we should be seeing a lot more about the semi in the coming months. Huh. Bruce said he checked his account page and it doesn't have anything for the premium connectivity. Huh. That's my account odd. mentions when my six months of free supercharging ended, I guess I'll enjoy free Netflix until otherwise. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you ordered early enough, I think they gave you free for life anyway, right, David? Uh, or, what was was it always for Model 3 premium connectivity? Uh, if you bought, again, if you bought before like July of 2019, if you you know ordered before July 2018, it, it was free for life. Oh, okay. But for used cars, for some reason, used cars had it like grandfathered in, even up through like January 9th or so of 2020. So it's weird how used yeah. cars got it grandfathered in longer so bruce is bruce's car used i don't know oh uh, yeah i don't know bruce if you just want to let us know um will the semi ever go commercial or is it more to show what's possible no there uh i think like what was it ups ordered like a hundred of them i don't know and walmart has ordered, walmart some, ordered all a kinds bunch. of companies have ordered them yeah and yeah um Somebody said CCS need the adapter Chatmo too slow definitely, for the US. Definitely. Agreed. Yeah, we've been you know, Europe has the CCS adapter which basically it's it's you know, we've got a supercharger. Tesla in the United States uses what? a supercharger. A great with, demonstration. Uh, you know, the standard whether you're charging AC at home or DC with a supercharger, but the CCS adapter uh, in Europe is not needed on the Model 3 because they have that CCS port built in and they have updated their superchargers to have two cables. Yeah. So that in Europe, you can either use the, the standard Tesla connector or the CCS. And if you have an older car that didn't come with CCS uh, innards or you know the, 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 the processing, uh, there's a way that the car has to identify itself on the CCS uh, network for billing purposes and to enable to you know, talk to the, the, the battery and everything. So uh, they have that in Europe now, and I'm surprised we haven't heard of that in the United States yet because, yeah. well, the supercharger network is growing uh, however, you know, percentage every year. It's amazing how it's expanding. There's still some places where CCS would be really useful, and it would be nice, even though those CCS providers are quite expensive compared to supercharging, it would be nice if CCS was available in the United States. What he said. Uh, Tiger Roll says Panasonic, Cattle, and Tesla, Giga, Reno, all making batteries now. Still too battery constraint? I would say so. Um, given the demand, we're seeing all these other car manufacturers. What was it? Audi is saying they're actually laying off a bunch of people because they can't produce and buy batteries fast enough. Yeah, and that's pretty and poor planning on all those other manufacturers. This is it's one of the big things I've always been adamant about with Tesla, that and their superchargers. Having control of your battery line is yeah. key because you don't have to depend on anybody else. Yeah. You you know exactly what your projections are. You handle everything in-house. Owning that process is massive. Yeah, and, and having that supercharger network allows the owner to travel anywhere, you know, whether it's Europe or, or China or the United States. Those owners are able to worry, you know, they don't have to worry about it. They know that this, unless you're in like North Dakota, but hopefully North Dakota it is under construction. Hopefully those will be around soon. But you know, you can now drive across Canada all the way on the Trans-Canadian Highway. So it's amazing. Yeah. But no other network has the the coverage of the supercharger network. and Or at a reasonable price. Yes. And I know there's like Ionity, I think, in, in Europe. It's just raised their prices. It's insanely expensive. I don't yeah. see... People, it's like they're trying to prevent people from using electric cars by charging it. It'll cost more than a regular gas or diesel car. Yeah. Uh, Brandon said Model 3 is made in China. Do not have a towing hitch at all. Okay. Unknown yeah. if aftermarket upgrade exists. Yeah. So that's I'm, good to know. I'm sure, you know, there are some other, like, Tesla uh, uh, compatible 
tow hooks that even on the Model S in the United States, so I'm sure somebody has one for the Model 3. Yeah. But uh, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, Riz Breezy says, do you think Cybertruck could come earlier? Looking to get a dual motor previously waited for why, but Cybertruck is so cool. Really agree with that. Cybertruck looks amazing. Um, I'm hoping we'll start seeing things earlier, especially like Model Y is a great example. We're getting it what? Six months early? I don't know. Yeah, we've we, when I heard the timeline for the Model Y, I was like, there's no way it's going to take that long. It's so similar to the Model 3. So I was glad, you know, when we finally did start seeing confirmation that it's coming out a lot sooner. So I don't know. I still think that the Cybertruck is probably a couple of years out just because it is totally different. And, and it's just amazing for that price point, what they're going to be offering, that they're yeah. going to have to... But again, it's totally different with the body, so that might be able to, you know, they don't have to have the stamping machines and everything built because it's just, you know, flat pieces of metal. Luke says, will Tesla remove the side mirrors and replace them with cameras? I don't think they need to replace them with cameras because they already have cameras on, like, the uh, side yeah, fenders. the side fender flares or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Blue wants to know if we're getting the ATV when it comes out. Yes. I don't know where we're going to put it yet. Yeah, I don't know. We're running the out of room in the is, garage. Yeah, yeah, the garage is going to be full, but I'll, I'll find room for that. I'll build a little shed for an ATV. Actually, I'll just store it in the Cybertruck. Yeah, yeah, it'll fit there. I'll yeah. drive it around all day. Um, Let's see. So, yeah, Jonathan's saying, uh, Tesla said in their Q4 letter that paid software upgrades are going to be more common. Any ideas yeah. for some upgrades they could release or that you hope they do in the coming months or year? Um, I think there's some games they could start charging for. I could see that. Uh, maybe they could have their own little app but, marketplace. Yeah. I just, I think though he's probably asking about those one thousand and two thousand dollar, you know. Oh, the upgrades. big ones. They're not going to charge mm. if if it's a three dollar game. Nobody's going to care about that. That's you know? true. <laughs> so, but it's a good way for them to make a ton but I, of money. But I wonder since there's no mention of the perform or the track mode on the Model Y, maybe that's going to be something that you're going to have to pay extra for. Whereas that's true. You know, with the three, it it's been available so. It yeah. was kind of a surprise when they came out with that acceleration boost, but um, yeah. <laughs> Someone can't get comfy. She's trying to get comfy. Yeah, that's on late, and she has a hard time getting comfortable. Yeah, uh, Andrew says, "Do you think Tesla will make a van?" I mean, I'm sure anything's possible in time, but I, I don't think we're going to see any new Tesla vehicles for a while. They have a lot in the queue. We got Y, we got Semi, we got Cybertruck, we got Roadster. They're, yeah. they're building quite a backlog, and you don't want to release too much at once because then. You just won't sell any of it because people are always going to want the next thing coming out a few years in yeah. the future. And with so many models, but you know what? By the time they release the Cybertruck and stuff, they're going to have to have a major, like upgrade to like the X or something like that too. So that's going to be the next one, I think. After you know, after the Cybertruck comes out, yeah, just refreshed in all their current ones. Um. Yeah. Steve says they hope Tesla opens some kind of app store in the future. Yeah, that They've would been, be really nice. Elon did mention that a couple of years ago, and it would be nice, or it would be nice if it had, you know, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but it seems like they're instead just doing the software themselves and they're releasing, like, the Tesla Theater and stuff and, and games. It's nice that they are doing that, but it's, it's unfortunate that right now you have to have MCU2 to get all those upgrades. Yeah. Um, sorry, James. Just, I'm not familiar with the situation. Um... But it says when they towed it in, maybe try the towing company. That'd be my guess. Um, let's see. A lot of comments here. Wow. Love it. Um, Brandon wants to know if we'll be getting a Model Y and what we're going to go for. So I've already pre-ordered a Model Y performance. White on white. And that'll be my new daily. I'm going to get rid of my all-wheel drive Model 3. So, I mean, hey, if anyone's interested in buying that. Yes, um, it's lightly used, only like <laughs> less than 4,000 miles, only a few months old. But yeah, I'm going to sell the all-wheel drive Model 3 and the uh, Y is going to be my new daily driver. And then I'll have my Model 3 performance for race car usage. Fun use. At least um, until the Roadster comes out. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for the Roadster. It's going to be epic. Let's see. Anything else on here? Uh, update on this semi Hot Wheels giveaway. So oh, yeah. winners have been messaged. Two people have responded. Three people have not. So going to give it like another week. And if those people don't respond, I will 
probably pick new winners. And so that's a, for those of you who don't know, um, was it Mattel or Hot Wheels or they they have a little set with the, the Tesla uh, Matchbox. With, I have Matchbox, it right here. Sorry, they've got the the Tesla Semi. And it comes with a little Model S as well. But Eric is doing a giveaway where he's giving away like five of those as well as, what, five other, um, four other cars with that, right? Yeah, there's like two Model 3s and two Model Xs, I think. So like five cars yeah. to five different winners. Or five, so 25 cars being given away so far. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely check out the video and you can comment on the Instagram post because if those three other people don't respond... Still a chance. Could be you. Um, and there'll be a lot of giveaways coming up. We have a lot of fun stuff uh, working out details. Um, Zach wants to know if we think new S and X are coming this year. Um, yeah. Didn't he say that plaid powertrain should be Pretty out sure by the, the end plaid. of the year? I mean, it's not going to be a totally new Model S, but Maybe. it's going to have, it's possible, but it's going to be having some major upgrades. Yeah. I would like to Fine. see a new interior and some exterior refreshing. Yeah. I mean, it still looks iconic, and it still looks amazing when you see them on the road, but I definitely think something a little little more could be helpful. Let's see. Oh, Bruce said uh, he's had two referrals here in British Columbia, but the government won't allow referral bonuses. Oh, that's... Unfortunately, there's, I know there's a couple states in the United States that are like that, too. I think yeah. it's like Ohio and Virginia or something like that. And it's really sad that, that the, the government has to, like, put an it into the, the, that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a bummer. The um, referral program isn't huge, though, anymore. I mean, uh, really, it's, yeah. you get a little bit of free supercharging. So you're supercharging not miles add lot. up if you do yeah. a lot of road trips. Yeah, but it's unfortunate that, that that's not available to you. Yeah. Um, Sean wants to know if we're East Coast or West Coast. We're mountain. Mountain. <laughs> mountain time. Uh, Colorado, to be exact. Um, Bruce is saying, do you know of any other place that does not allow referral bonuses? Oh, yeah. Other yeah. states. There's, I want to say, like, four maybe states I know of at least two that don't, that don't. Yeah. Um, let's see. Consumer1982 says, are you going to buy a semi? So I should have... Mm-hmm. Pre-ordered the semi when it was only five thousand dollars, but now it's like twenty five thousand. Does that mean I'll not end up with one? Maybe I don't think. Maybe I, don't think I we will. Need a semi. There's not room in the garage. It won't fit. No, we'd have to get a warehouse. And or we something. have, you know, we have a big driveway, but I don't want to have to have a semi parked in the front of the house. So. I would like to buy the semi and then take the trailer portion and make like a mini home on it that I can pull the roadster up on and then travel with that. Oh, that would be nice. That's yeah. that's what I would like if. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, it would it would probably just cost too much money to really make yeah. it happen, but I, it would. Yeah. It sounds I, nice. I do know some other people have ordered the semi, but it's like we don't. I don't know. We don't have room for it with all these other cars. It's like I don't know what would we do with a semi. Yeah, <laughs> we could rent it out, but we wouldn't need it our, ourselves. Maybe I'll become a truck driver. Yeah, but if it's gonna have autopilot, it's like it, maybe I, I we won't. You won't need. Maybe you just maybe it buy it and then us. rent it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like okay. the cyber taxi. Maybe we need to go buy one. Yeah. Um, Supton says, "What about your Model S? Do you not drive it anymore?" So the Model S is his daily driver now. Yeah. I'm Model Three daily driver, soon to be Model Y, then soon to be Cybertruck. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, so yeah, we still have two Model S's in the household and two Model Threes. We had a Model X for part of last year, but uh, we have sold that last summer. Steve wants to know if you've heard of anyone adding another charger to a Model 3 to raise it from 48 amps to 80 amps. Um, no. I don't, I believe 48 is still the max. Yeah, and yeah, 48 for that, and or the SR has, I think, 32, but it seems like Tesla's kind of downsizing. Oh, uh, uh, look, um, they're oh, kind of downsizing. The puppies want to play. Going down to the 48, because even their latest wall connector that came out, it only has a max of 48 amps, whereas the older wall connectors could go up to 80 amps. So it seems like they're, you know, cutting back on, on the amount of power, because, you know, with more superchargers, if you're doing road trips, you don't, you don't need that. But if you're charging at home, for most people, 48 amps, I guess, is enough. I guess the, the puppies like to bored. play. They, yeah, they get bored every now and then. Um, we'll get through some of these questions <laughs> real quick. <laughs> usually it's the other... Yeah, oh. Usually it's the other way around. I guess Kit wants to play. It's okay, buddy. We're going to go play I think it's because she's in his spot on the oh, floor yeah. there. 
Um, <laughs> somebody wants to know if we'll ever buy a, an EV that's not a Tesla. Actually, mm -hmm. I was going to try to buy a Porsche Taycan until that just hit the fan. We, but also, we had other problems, too. When we try to go talk to all these car dealers, they don't even want to talk to us. Yeah. It's, you know. Jaguar yeah. wanted nothing to really do with me. Yeah. Um, Audi talked to me for a minute and then wanted nothing to do with me, so... Yeah. Carmel, though, was nice. We spoke with them and... But I honestly think it was the dealerships just didn't want to sell an EV. Yeah. I think that's what it boils uh, down to. That's another thing, too, because they still have gas vehicles yeah. and they're trying to push those. And it's just, like, they're not really trying. Yeah. And, and again, those other cars, they don't have a supercharger network. And so you have to rely on a third-party co company and you... Which you costs know, a ton of money. It's, yeah. And it's not integrated with the navigation, so you're going to have to do a lot more planning on where you're going to stop and for how long. So Yeah. But um, I, I Jonathan is asking what we think the highest spec Roadster acceleration will be. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly spec, expecting like maybe 1.7, 1.6. It really depends on those cold air thrusters, if that's a thing or not. Yeah, cause because did, traction is the limiting factor here. Yeah. Because didn't they say 1.8, 1.9, but that was before uh, the thrust? I think thrust he said 1.9. Okay. But, I mean, it could even be, just be 1.8. To be honest, people would shell out $100,000 plus dollars to be able to shave off another, like, tenth of a second like that. Because once you get to, like, that fast, it, it's hard to cut any other time off. Um, what do we think about the new V3 home chargers? So those are the ones that... that the white we, ones. They just came the out. The glass we, ones. I yeah, think, so yeah. they're white. They, as we mentioned before, they only go up to 48 amps, which is as high as the chargers that are available built into the Model 3 or the S or the X. But uh, we don't know why they don't... I, I guess they don't need to go to 80 anymore because cars don't have chargers, except for the people that own older Model yeah. S's and X's. So I don't know. One thing that's different about those V3 wall connectors, too, is that they use Wi-Fi to communicate with each other now. So, uh, and it seems they also support, I think up to 16 can be paired together. And so those seems like they're gonna be more popular in like hotels and businesses that have, that wanna have, have an, a lot more connectors yeah. all. But they'll be, instead of having to run wiring between all like 16, they can just all connect, communicate via Wi-Fi, but at a maximum of that 48 amps, which is still pretty good compared to some other electric cars. And if you're gonna be, Charging for several hours, 40 amps is good, but it is a downgrade from the, the 80 amp wall connector they used to provide. Yeah. Shevzilla says, have you ever met Elon Musk? We have at the events. Yep. Several. We've seen him at several events. We air, fist bump. Air We've gaming, done all kinds you know, like of Like a stuff. high five and stuff, but, you know, security was right there, so, you know, didn't go much on that, but, yeah, <laughs> we've, we've seen him at yeah. several events, but we're not, like, on a first name basis or anything yet. I mean, <laughs> but we, we do see him. He replies to a lot yeah. of Eric tweet, Eric's we, tweets. We tweet back and forth every yeah. now and then. Um, Supton asks, what do you think about the $7 price target by ARK Invest? I think it's wonderful. $7? $7,000 oh, stock price. Slight difference. Yeah. Uh, I think it's wonderful. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, somebody said they went to a Chevy dealer for a Bolt test drive, and the salesman disappeared for 45 minutes. I left, plan on getting a Tesla instead. I yeah. think you made the right choice. Yeah, definitely. We tried that years ago when we were trying to look at like a Honda plug-in yeah. hybrid. Every place we went, they were just like, oh, no, those are only sold in California. Nobody would help us buy an electric car. So we both ordered Model S's back on the same day in April of 2016. Yeah. And we had already placed orders for the Model 3, but since it was so far out at the time, we ordered Model S's to keep us uh, you know, satisfied until the 3 came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything else, David? No, that's a good recap for today. I, yeah, I that was a good recap of like the week's news. Um, but yeah, we're kind of thinking about maybe doing this every Friday evening, barring any technical difficulties like we did have. Uh, Hopefully yeah. we got that fixed. Um but yeah, thinking like every Friday evening would be a good time for this. We can sit, we can chat, we can talk. The first part would probably just be us talking about recap uh, of what's happening. Recap happened. of yeah. news for the week. And then second half, yeah, we kind of do what we did, open it up for questions because it's it's a lot of fun talking with you guys. And like Sean here just posted 3.40 a.m. here in Spain. Oh, wow. And he's chatting with us. Thank you, Sean. Um, <laughs> that's awfully early. Or, yeah. uh, I don't know if you've gotten sleep yet or you haven't. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you have. But, um, yeah, it's kind of fun to just kind of chat with you guys, see your messages, uh, answer questions. 
And if you have any questions too, you could always email them to us, and that way, you know, yeah. if it takes some time for us to research those, we could, uh, you know, check it out, see what we know, and, and get back with you on the next video. Yeah, or if there's something you want to see In talked about, yeah. um, definitely just tweet us. Uh, and we can do a little bit of research ahead of yeah. time too, make and, sure we're good. And, and that's not just for this video, but for any of the videos, if there's something you have yeah. in mind, then we could, uh, you know, definitely always looking for other video ideas. Yep. Uh, Supton is in Zurich. It is 3.42 oh. a.m. Guten Morgen. He's more on that than I am. Yeah. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Looking for a response? <laughs> oh, there's a delay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe or or delay. he doesn't understand my accent. <laughs> yeah, it could be both. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for hanging out with us for the last like and hour and 40 minutes. Uh, it's been a great time. And there's Mr. Kit. Yeah. He is ready for his food. This ridge back. Oh, yeah, he's probably hungry. Oh, yeah, he's hungry. Yeah, he's hungry. Are you hungry, Kit? He's been moving his head. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're probably going to end it there. Again, though, huge thanks for hanging out with us. And if you haven't already, definitely check out our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean, all listed down below. Uh, using code Tesla Inventory will get you 15% off your first purchase. All kinds of really cool accessories. Definitely check them out. Uh, Kit's whining. He's, he's getting he's hungry. hungry. So um, we're going to go. Thank you, though, so much. It's been a blast. Until next time, enjoy your week.